one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty one, thirty four, fifty five, eighty nine, one hundred forty four, two hundred thirty three, three hundred seventy seven. Six hundred ten, nine hundred eighty seven, one thousand five hundred ninety seven, two thousand five hundred eighty four, four thousand one hundred eighty one, six thousand seven hundred sixty five, ten thousand nine hundred forty six, seventeen thousand seven hundred eleven. So, what's the big idea about these numbers? It's all down to this man. Leonardo Fibonacci who discovered the awesome truth about this sequence. Believe it or not, so much of our lives are governed by this sequence. This is our program called The Golden Ratio. Fibonacci was really called Leonardo Pisano or Leonardo of Pisa and he belonged to the Bonacci family, a prominent trading family. Leonardo F. I. Bonacci or Leonardo of the Bonacci family came shortened to Fibonacci. Believe it or not, he was born in 1170 or thereabout. His father was the customs officer in Bihai, an Algerian town. Interestingly enough, not only did he discover the magical sequence, but we can attribute our counting system we use today, using the Hindu Arabic system 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 instead of Roman numerals. Credits of a BBC production The year of production is always written as Roman numerals. Can you work them out? Up until then, Roman numerals had been used. The trouble is that the Roman way of counting did not have a symbol for zero. Using the new numerical system with a zero opened up all sorts of possibilities for traders. But it was Fibonacci's work on rabbits that brought us to his famous sequence. So what about this sequence? What's the big deal? It's only a bunch of numbers, isn't it? Wrong. No if much, much more and we will look into why later. Look at the sequence. Can you see how it works? 1 add 1 makes 2. 1 add 2 makes 3. 2 add 3 makes 5. 3 add 5 makes 8. 5 add 8 makes 13. 8 add 13 makes 21 and so we add the two previous numbers together to find the next in the sequence. See? I was right. It's only a bunch of numbers. I can't see that I will have to call upon a greater expert to explain. Who better than but Professor Leonardo Fibonacci himself? Tell me, Professor Fibonacci, how did you discover this set of numbers and why are they important? I uh, was uh, working on a breeding habit of our rabbits when I found out the population can grow in a particular way. In fact, 
they grow in accordance away with my special number sequence. If I had a pair of rabbits, and they gave birth to a pair of rabbits, now I had a two rabbits, and they gave a birth to a three a pair of rabbits. And when they grew up, uh, they would give birth to five a pair of rabbits. Then they gave birth to two of eight a pair of rabbits. And then thirteen, and then uh, so on. As I saw the, the pattern, I looked for uh, other examples of a sequence, and I found all the sorts of uh, things in the nature. Look at the pair of spirals in a pineapple, or a sunflower, or a pine cone. The segments counted one way, and then the other, and the numbers appeared on my astonishing uh, sequence. It's only a bunch of numbers. Excuse, my friend. Please carry on, Professor Fibonacci. And no, this is very significant, seeing at the time you people in England were building castles, and King John was asked to sign the Magna Carta. Now, if you divide the 13 by the 8, and any pair of numbers, a decimal will occur. Not perfectly the same, but very close. Try it for yourself and see what happens. Let us look at what happens when we divide one numbers by another in the sequence. Let's take 610 and 377. And the answer is 1.6180371. Seeing that the fourth decimal place is a zero, I'll stick with 1.618. Let's try 144 and 89, and the answer is 1.617977. You've been caught out. It's different. Not so quick. The fourth number is a 9, so I round up and I have 1.618 again. Excuse me, but we artists have known about this for 3,000 years or even more. Fibonacci has just showed us how to find it in numbers. It is the ratio of beauty. Look at my Mona Lisa. Every bit of the face is an example of how the golden ratio can be used. Look for yourself. All the measurements of her face fit the sequence. Her eyes, her nose, her chin, every part of her face, a beauty, is a mathematical. Hmm, I'm beginning to see now. What else can this sequence or this golden ratio do? I think it's time to call upon our resident professor to see what he has come up with. Hello, I'm Professor Maelstrom. I'm here standing out in the natural environment talking to you about this incredible set of numbers the Fibonacci sequence. There's no more fitting place to be than out in nature because it is here that we see the Fibonacci sequence manifesting itself. So come with me and I will take you on a trail in search of the golden ratio. Do you remember the Fibonacci sequence? Look, we can use it to construct our own shell by making this grid. One, one, two, three, five, eight, and thirteen. There you are, and we can colour it in, creating a shell. Go into the garden and see if you can find a shell, and it will look something like that. Generally speaking, flowers have the petals which are in the Fibonacci sequence. There are a few exceptions, but this one isn't. This one has thirteen petals. And look at the seed head, and you'll find that there's some spirals if you look very carefully into it. And if you count the spirals one side and the other side, and you'll find that the two numbers are in the Fibonacci sequence. Here we have 13 and 21. And most incredibly of all, your body is made up of the Fibonacci sequence. Look at the back of your hand. And you'll find that the bone structure is designed in such a way that the forefinger is made up of 2, 3, 5 and 8, going towards the wrist. Incredible, isn't it? Geometric shapes like the five-pointed star has the uh, Fibonacci sequence in it too. Look at this, two, three, five, and eight. Again, most incredible. It's everywhere. Even 
millions of light years across the universe to see galaxies like this one. They are made up of a spiral that is in the Fibonacci sequence. And that is just incredible. And from the macro right down to the micro, we have the DNA sequence, a spiral helical ladder that is the formation of life. And guess what? That is even regulated by the Fibonacci sequence. Let's just consider the mathematics of all this. You've heard that already that two numbers in the sequence, when divided by other, gives a number which is about 1.618. Now let's look more deeply into the mathematics of this incredible number, which we call phi, or the golden ratio. Here we are in Egypt with the Great Pyramid of Cheops behind me. Who better to understand the golden ratio than the ancient Egyptians? And this pyramid was built more than 4,500 years ago. And hidden within its uh, dimensions is the golden ratio itself. It's hot here in the desert, so come with me and I'll show you a model I made earlier, which is one three hundredths of the size of the original. The height of Cheops is 146.5 metres and the width is 230 metres. One three hundredth of the height is approximately 48.1 centimetres and half the width is 37.8 centimetres. That means, using Pythagoras, the hypotenuse is 61.2 centimetres. We'll talk about Pythagoras again later. Now, if we divide the hypotenuse of 61.2 centimetres by half the base, which is 37.8, we arrive at 1.619, very close to our golden ratio. Now let's delve more deeply into the realm of mathematics and see how we can find different ways of making this ratio 1.618. Just imagine, we chose a circle with perhaps a radius of 100 centimetres, and we drew the circle just like this. Then C equals 2x times par times 100, which is 628.318. Now supposing we put over the top of that a square, which has a perimeter exactly the same size as the circumference of the circle. Then the perimeter would be 618.319. And each side of the square would be 618.319 divided by 4, which would be 157.08. So side A of our triangle we're going to create would be half of the width of the square, which would be... 157.08 divided by 2, which will be 78.54. This is the Pythagoras moment, because we want to find the side B. So if A squared plus B squared is equal to R squared, then it follows that B squared minus R squared equals A squared. Now, if we put some numbers where the letters are, we can take our calculations in this direction. So if B squared is the same as 100 squared minus 78.54 squared, then B squared is 10,000 and minus 6,168.503 equals 3,831.497. Therefore, if we square root the 3,831.497, we get 61.9. The big question is, can we find the golden ratio in this plethora of numbers? Well, let's find out. The radius divided by the number we found, uh, which is a 61.9, will give us an answer of 1.61551, which is not quite the golden ratio, which is 1.618, but this is very close to phi. Simple, really. Now, this is the interesting bit. Turn this around by 90 degrees, then take away the circle and the square, then reflect the triangle. Look what's happened. We have recreated the Pyramid of Cheops. Now let's move a little bit further forward into, uh, into history, to the time of the Greeks. Take a square and measure each side as being one. Draw a line through it. This means that the height of each rectangle would naturally be 0 0.5 or a half. At one side of the division line, where it meets the edge of the square, make this the centre of the circle. A diagonal forms a radius for the circle. It follows that a line straight up to the circle is also a radius. And so we call upon our friend Pythagoras to try and work out the length of the radius. And you'll see there's a right angle triangle. So 0.5 squared add 1 squared gives you 1.25. And we square root that to give you the value of 1.1180339989. So this is where the magic happens. Because if you add the other 0.5 of the lower rectangle to the radius, how you get the new value of 1.61803389, which is phi, 
or the golden ratio. And maybe this is how the Greeks worked it out. And this is what the golden ratio looks like. The Acropolis is said to be designed on the golden ratio. Do you remember our grid with 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8 and 13? We're well, going to use the same grid again. This time to sketch out the Acropolis. Just to show that this is the Acropolis is based on the golden ratio. Now, bringing you bang up to date. Sell, 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 buy, 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 sell, 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 buy, 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 buy. It's crazy that even the behaviour of the, the stock exchange is governed by the golden ratio. Now, as we said before, the golden ratio is hidden in all sorts of places all the way around us in our environment. But did you know, it's actually enshrined within music as well. Come with me and I'll show you. Let's start with the scale. The scale has eight notes. And here they are, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Ah, but that's interesting. Eight. That's in the Fibonacci sequence. But the numbers in a chord, we number as one, three, five, and eight. Ooh, interesting. That's also in the Fibonacci sequence. And there are 13 notes in a chromatic scale. 13, also in the Fibonacci sequence. What have we learned? I don't know. What have you learned? Uh, it is an idea that has been around a long time, even before Fibonacci's day 800 years ago. The Greeks and the Egyptians might not have had all the mathematics. Fibonacci showed it belonged to a special sequence. But then the Greeks and the Egyptians somehow had an inkling about it as shown through their architecture. Are you convinced? Is it just a bunch of numbers? Alright, I'm convinced. It's pretty incredible stuff, yeah? The golden ratio is all the way around.